my my next sheet the same so that when I'm comparing them I can look at the original and see if they're alternate interior or same side interior or corresponding angles how they relate to each other all right take your clear paper or your transparency or your tracing paper and put it on top and trace your parallel lines along with your transversal and then just label your label your angles notice I labeled them the same one two three four and then my second set five six seven eight and what you can do then is take this and just slide it across and notice that all those corresponding angles are congruent. You can actually see that one goes with five and two slides over on top of six and three with seven and four with eight. If you go the other way, the same thing happens. Those corresponding angles line up so the corresponding angles are in fact congruent. You can take this top sheet, flip it upside down, and you can see that all of those are also, well, they all, all line up, like they're congruent. If I look at what numbers match on top of each other, I have 2 with 7 and 4 with 5. Going to my original, I can see that 2 and 7 are alternate interior, and 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles. When I stacked them on top, they were congruent. So alternate interior angles are congruent. My last one said that same side interior angles are congruent, or the third thing we looked at today. 4 and 7 are same side to see if they're supplementary, not congruent, excuse me. To see if 4 and 7 are supplementary, I'm going to take angle 7 on my transparency here. I'm going to slide it next to 4 and see if it makes a straight line. So I've got to get it in the right position. And if I slide it up there, this is angle 4 and this is angle 7. And they do, in fact, make a straight line. So angle 4 with angle 7 are supplementary. There's lots of neat things you can look at by just tracing those over and slide them all over every which way. Okay, we're going to prove that line A is parallel to line B. I'm sorry, given line A is parallel to line B, we're going to prove that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. All right, we know that A and B are parallel. If A and B are parallel, then we can say that 1 and 3 are congruent because they're corresponding angles. And I also know that 2 and 3 are supplementary because they form a linear pair. So if 1 and 3 are congruent and 2 and 3 are supplementary, then 1 and 2 must also be supplementary. Let's see if we can write that out and make it make a little bit more sense. So given um, A parallel to B, I can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Because corresponding angles are congruent. All right. Once I have corresponding angles are congruent, I want to somehow associate 2 with 3 so that I can replace 1 with 3. Well, angle 2 and angle 3 form a linear pair. So they're supplementary because they form a linear pair. So I'm going to say angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary. Because they form a linear pair. And since angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary, if I substitute angle 1 in for angle 3, I can say that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. By substitution, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. So what I did is I, I was given the fact that A and B are parallel. I looked at the fact because they're parallel, angle 1 and angle 3 are congruent, corresponding angles. I also can see that 2 and 3 are supplementary because they form a linear pair, they make a line. And then using substitution, I can say that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. All right, we've got 
line A parallel to line B, so I'm going to go ahead and mark these, A parallel to B, line C parallel to line D, C parallel to D. Find the measure of angle 1 and then the measure of angle 2, and we need to tell which theorem or postulate justifies that as our answer. All right, here's angle 1. I can see that the angle that corresponds with angle 1 is given to me as 50 degrees if I look at those two lines A and B, the parallel lines A and B. So I can say that the measure of angle 1 equals 50 degrees because corresponding parts, or in this case corresponding angles, are congruent. Then, for, to find the measure of angle 2, I can see that those are both same side interior angles. So, if I've got a 50 degree angle and the same side interior angle is what I'm looking for, 180 minus 50 is 130. So, the measure of angle 2 is 130, same side interior angles are supplementary. All right, we're going to find the values of x and y. When I'm given a picture like this, I've got partial lines in there. There's nothing wrong with taking a straight edge and just extending these out so we can better see uh, what my corresponding angles are. So. What the, the point of that was to help me see that X and this 70 are corresponding angles. It's not as clear um, when those lines cut off too short. If they're corresponding angles, then X must be 70. And then to find the measure of Y, I can see that these three angles have to be 180. I've got 70 plus 50, that's 120. 70 plus 50 plus y equals 180. 120 plus y equals 180, so y equals 60. Now, a big thing that messes some people up is they see this y, and they automatically think that right here is the corresponding angle. Notice that that corresponding angle was cut by a 50 degree angle. So 70 plus 110 should give me 180. 50 and the 60 gives me that 110. So just be careful when you're looking at corresponding angles that if there's other lines involved, you take the whole angle, not just part of it.